Hi there folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy of the Yever and Andy Fishing channel. Yever's just gone off to work. It's half seven in the morning and I've actually got a day off work. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go and do some fishing. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take you guys with me. Nice early start. I'm gonna fish a lake that I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about when we get in the car. Let's go. So this lake, it, it used to be one of my local lakes. It's an old trend gravel pit and I used to fish it a long, long time ago in my teens for pike predominantly. And I remember there was one day in particular when I was down there, a really, really hard day on the pike. I was really struggling to get a bite and I scaled down. I was on a 60 gram old clunky spinning rod and I scaled right down and put a, a little jig head on. And um, I had to take it a long, long range, a really long way out and hit it and very little resistance. And I just assumed it was a jack. So I cranked it and cranked it and cranked it and got it about four or five rod lengths away and it was the biggest perch I have ever seen in my life. It was enormous. Unfortunately, I cranked it that hard that by the time I lifted the rod, slipped the net under it, the hook pulled. So I got the bait straight back out there and sure enough, same spot, I hooked another fish. I was a bit more careful with this one. I got that one in and actually that fish was my longest ever UK perch. That was a 45 centimetre fish. It was huge, real old war horse of a fish. But I've always regretted losing that first fish because the first one was bigger than the second. For about 12 months after that I fished it really regularly for those big perch uh, with proper kit. I scaled right down. I never had another touch. This this water has knocked me around. Uh, if me and this lake were in a boxing match it would have been called off a long time ago and I'm fully expecting to not get a fish today. But I'm going to take you guys and the cameras along with me in the hope that maybe, just maybe, today's going to be the day. Let's go and find out. And we've just pulled up. It's weird actually, driving down the driveway to this place has brought back quite a lot of memories. Mostly pretty bad ones. But one thing I did remember actually on the drive here was the last time I came here perch fishing, which was um, uh, very early into when IB and I started fishing together. And I, I came down with the perch kit, all finesse and delicate, convinced that I was going to catch one of these monster perch. And um, IB was just learning to do a pike fishing, so she was on a jerkbait rod. She was throwing... Um, she was throwing a 20 centimetre jerk bait, and only one perch was caught that day and it was caught by IB on a 20 centimetre jerk bait on 150 pound single strand titanium trace and 80 pound braid and I didn't have a fish. I don't know what it is about this place, it beats me up, even just pulling up here has filled me with trepidation. I'm not sure what's going to happen today, I'm going to give him my best shot. Love. So I've chosen to go down the two rod route. It's gonna give me a couple more options. I've got a three to 16 jigging rod, a slightly longer rod, real specialist range jigging rod. It's one of my favorite fishing rods of all time, but it's only really good for one thing. It's great for range jigging, but everything else is just too fast. The second rod is a five to 14. It's actually a saltwater rod. Uh, it's slightly more through action than the specialist jigging rod, which means I can throw hard baits with it. Uh, it's much better on hook sets with weedless lures. I know there are crayfish in this lake, so maybe we might throw a cray at some point. I've got enough kit. Whether or not I've got everything else I need to try and catch a perch out of here, I don't know. I guess there's only one way to find out. Right, so we made it around the lake. It's a slightly longer walk than I remember. Either that or I'm a bit older and more unfit than I remember. Uh, no comments about that, particularly from the UIB. I can read your mind. Uh, already hit a couple of snags. First off, you may be able to see behind me, there's a pretty thick layer of bright green algae on the water. It doesn't look very pretty. I'm not sure it'll affect the fishing, but it, it looks pretty rank. The second snag is that uh, the 100 meters of bank that I desperately wanted to spend the most time on has been closed off. I'm not really sure why. Um, it's a massive lake, there's loads of space. There's one specific bit of bank that I really wanted to target and I can't. So that's a bit of a spanner in the works, but there's heaps of space, there's loads of bank. I've got plenty of space to cover. Uh, there's grebes diving, I've seen fry jumping. Everything that I've seen so far suggests this could be a good day's fishing, but I've seen all this before in this place and it's not worked out. The only way I'm gonna figure it out is by casting. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna start the GoPro up. Let's see if we can catch some fish.
Let me know in the comments. Is this going to affect the fishing? Am I wasting my time here with this algae? Right, so I think I'll, um, I'll jig this one back in this last 10 yards or so and I'm going to switch out to the um, switch out to the crayfish rod just for three or four casts um, and then I'm moving on. I really don't like this algae. I have no idea if it's going to affect the fish or not. But it, I don't know. If I was a fish, I wouldn't want to live in this. So we'll give this another couple of minutes on the other rod and then we'll go and find some slightly more clean water. Sludgy crayfish. Blech. Well, no fish yet, and to be quite honest, that that green sludge is really putting me off this. I mean, it is disgusting. Just look at what it's done to my boots. No touches, no taps. Uh, the odd bream and carp roll, but I've seen no great evidence of any fish down here, so I'm gonna get out of dodge and find some clearer water. I mean, if I was a bait fish, I wouldn't wanna live in that. So I've just had to walk probably three or four hundred meters along the bank to avoid that green stuff. It, it is thick with it. And I was fishing right there and I've had to come right the way around the whole side of that bank. But where I am, it's not quite so bad. There could be a few more fish here. So first cast here and already something's different. Um, I've still got that five gram jig head on and that slightly smaller lure. I'm just bumping up the bank there. And um, I'm sure you can probably see on the footage, but there's a bit of a crosswind here at the moment. And I can't really feel that jig head to the same extent I wanted to. So I'm gonna make a quick change here and I'm gonna change up to perhaps a seven gram head and a slightly heavier lure. I just wanna make sure I'm in contact with this line. Make sure I hit those takes. Convenient, that's rigged up on a seven for me. So about an hour in from last time I spoke to you and as expected this has been pretty tough. I have just had a pretty tentative bump on, um, on one of those tea tail minnows. I couldn't tell you whether it was a perch or a pike or, or whatever. It, it was a something which is about as much as I've had out of this lake for three years so I think I'll take that. Unfortunately the sun started to come out which is a real pain. I really don't want that for perch fishing. I'd rather it stay cloudy. But I have just noticed that on the other side of this bay where I'm stood at the moment there's quite a few grebes working. They're diving regularly. Uh, there must be some bait in here and actually at the top of the bay uh, there's four or five more grebes that are just kind of hanging around. It's almost as if they've penned some bait in here. So rather than work my way around there, I'm going to go straight around to the other side where these grebes are, uh, see if there's anything down on the bottom there they're interested in, because if the grebes are down there taking fry, then it's a pretty safe bet that the perch should be somewhere near. So I've seen more surface activity here than I have in the rest of the lake combined so far this morning. So 
just going to try something different for five minutes. I'm going to stick a wire trace on. Um, I'm going to stick a spinner through here. I just wonder if some of these fish are sat mid to high water. I'm probably jigging this below them. Uh, nothing else has really worked so far this morning. So, um, you know, we'll make a change. If this isn't working, we've got to change it. We've got to do something else. So, yeah, we just spend five or ten minutes. I'll stick a spinner through here and maybe I'll put a little hard bait through here as well. It, it's worth a go. Well, <laughs> I can't believe it. That is a perch. That is a perch. It's um, not quite as big as the last one I caught here, but there's no mistake in it. That is the target species. <laughs> oh dear. Interesting. So while it may not be the, the big fish we were after, it has drawn a take from a fish. Maybe we're onto something with this spinner. There's a fish. What have we got? Now we've got another one of those little perch. Absolutely identical that one. I just wonder if this is what those grebes are diving on. So a couple of small perch there on that spinner and it sounds kind of intuitive but I'm actually going to take it back off. I think that that's just told me everything I need to know about this swim. My feeling is that those greaves are probably diving on the shoal of those smaller perch. So I'm going to change the jigging rod back to a jigging rod. I'm going to put a very light jig head on. I'm going to pick out a perch coloured, a perch pattern, soft plastic, very small one. Just bounce that around, just see if there's any slightly larger perch that are also preying on those small guys. You get this every now and again, they get really fixated on a particular food source. And if there's a huge shoal of those little perch down there, I think we need to match the hatch. Right, that's two of those in two casts. They seem like slightly better fish following this luring. I feel like I'm on the way to cracking this. It might be that I need to put a, a little suspending crankbait on here actually. They seem to like this, they seem to like this shad when I'm bringing it back quite erratically. That's quite hard to do obviously with a jig head on there, it always drops. I think I'll give this a couple more minutes and I might start having to think about a suspending crank that can just, you know, twitch it and just let it sit in front of them on a tight line. I don't know, it feels like we've got more pieces of the puzzle than we did an hour ago, that's for sure. I think that looks super fishy. Beautiful little thing. Surely something's going to have a snap at that. You almost fished this like like it was a tiny little jerk bait. We're essentially jerk baiting for perch here, so I'm gonna be twitching and darting this back towards me. I've had four takes in this area. Those two small fish that I've caught and two other fish that snapped at the lure late, but everything has been quite close to me. So I just wonder if these fish are sat midway up or just at the top of the shelf. There is quite a serious shelf in this area. Might, oh, that's noisy. It might well be that by just twitching this over the top of the shelf, I could possibly pull up one of those big fish and provoke a slightly more aggressive reaction than I got from the jig. It's amazing. This little hard bait's two and a half inches. 
I can hear it rattling under the water, maybe. 15 meters, oh, there's a fish. Eee. I can hear it rattling maybe 15, 20 meters away from me. Little perch again. Oh, he caught one in the side as well, but the legit one is in your gob. Stop that. It's saying something when that's the biggest fish of the day, but it is so far. But again, close take. That was just coming over the top of the shelf. So it may well be that that shoulder smaller fish is there. Possibly there might be a bigger fish amongst them, let's hope so. So, general perch cliche is you look for them around a hard structure. Now, obviously in a gravel pit, that's pretty difficult because we haven't got any really. Um, you know, we haven't got any lock gates, we haven't got any walls, we haven't really got any of that stuff. Um, but we have got stuff in the margins, we've got things like trees, so I might, just, I might just try a few down the edge. The water's still warm enough that these perch might not have moved into deeper water yet, so. Let's just bop a few casts around the around the trees and see if there's anything still sat in that two, three, four feet of water. It's worth a go. So the sun's pretty high now. Um, I think my best chance of getting a really big fish is probably gone. I think if I am going to have another chance at a big fish, I'm going to have to find some slightly deeper water. I feel like I've got a lot of smaller fish in front of me, so I'm going to have a quick walk around to the other side of the lake I reckon there's some deeper water that we can put a, a jig through and see if we can um, see if we can jig one of these big perch out right so I've just found a little inflow pipe that looks like it could be good for a couple of smaller perch so just for five minutes I'm going to scale right down 55 mil bait, 3 gram head. It's the kind of stuff we'd use on the canal. It looks pretty fishy. Let's see what we can find. Lots of little takes, but I think they are quite small fish. And again, oh, yep, there we go, got that one. Oh. There it goes. <laughs> I'm counting that one, by the way. We found some small guys. Just need to find uh, big brothers and sisters now. Ooh, there we go. Not quite up to where it's meant to be. Oh, 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 oh. There it goes. Yeah, this little, this little inlet's loaded with smaller fish. about hard structure. Maybe you can see that that piece of concrete that sticks out. Geez, it should be perched somewhere near there. It's deep as well. There we go, there's a fish. Ah, well, it would appear that today's big gravel pit perch session has turned into a wasping session. But at least they're perch. This is better than I've done most times with being here. Ooh, biggest one of the day. Well, this is, this is ridiculous. I'm getting lots of little Clucks and tail nips that I'm not converting, so I'll try and find the smallest bait I've got. Tiny little ray try. And with a slightly longer shank hook, the hook point's gonna be right at the back. So even the even the wariest tail nip I should convert. Well that seemed to work alright.
So I kind of feel like I could have stood there and fished for those fish all day and probably just kept catching small perch after small perch after small perch. But it wasn't really what I came here to do, so I'm going to leave those guys alone now and I'll give it another 20 minutes, half an hour in a couple of other spots. The sun's up, we're in the middle of the day now, we're, we're past prime perch time, that's for sure, but we'll give it another 20 minutes. Honestly, the amount of these things I find knocking around lakes, I really ought to go into business selling secondhand spawns. I don't know what carp anglers do with these things, but crikey, they're good at losing them. Well, I've just broken off both rods in the same swim. I think on the same snag, <laughs> which I think probably is the end of this morning or this afternoon as it is now. Uh, the end of the session. I've got a really long walk back to the car. Uh, when I get there, I'll have a quick breather and I'll um, fill you guys in on exactly how I think this has gone. Any good? Do you, um... Uh, do you use these things? Yep. You're welcome to that one. I found it around the far side. It's no good to me. <sighs> well, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. If you'd have told me at the start of the day that I was going to catch as many perch as I have, I'd, I'd have snapped your hand off. I mean, that's the most perch I've ever caught out of this lake in 15 years of fishing it. In total, they probably weighed about the same weight as the last really big fish I had out of here. Uh, I was not expecting this to turn into a wasping session at all. It was kind of cool. You know, I've caught fish on three different styles of baits. We started off getting a couple on the spinner and that was pretty cool. It's nice to do something a bit different. Yeah, I don't use a spinner much these days. I, I really ought to use it more. Then we had one on that little twitch minnow, the hard bait. That was cool as well. I mean, that I felt at that point like I was starting to solve the mystery. Unfortunately, while that was happening, the sun was getting higher and higher and conditions were getting worse and worse. And then at the back end there, we caught a load of those little guys uh, in that stream mouth. Basically wasp fishing, finesse fishing. Uh, I hope there might be a bigger fish in there, but ultimately my feeling was that they almost certainly wasn't going to be. Still though, caught a few fish. It wasn't the disaster it could have been. I've really enjoyed myself. I really hope you've enjoyed it too. Uh, if you have, please give the video a like, give it a share, and please drop me a comment. Let me know A, anything that I could have done differently with regards to fishing, and B, uh, what your opinions are of the video. Um, there's an elephant in the car here, in that Yever isn't in this video, and hasn't been involved in this video, and it's the first time. Guys, please let me know if you want to watch videos with just me in it, obviously we're getting towards the winter now. Yeva's going to be at work more and more, so I'm going to be doing more videos on my own. So please let me know um, what you want me to make, how you want me to make it, and I will do my best to make sure you guys are getting the content that you want. Thank you very much for watching, uh, and I'll catch up with you guys soon for some more fishing. Bye-bye.